fellow parliamentarians, ambassadors, distinguished guests. <coughs> it is an honor and privilege to welcome you to our winter meeting here in Vienna. This meeting has become a valued tradition in our assembly and of the OEC as a whole. I would, first of all, like to thank the Austrian Parliament and the OEC for hosting us and once again offer condolences on behalf of the PA to the Austrian people, people over the loss of our esteemed colleague and friend Barbara Bramer. For the 14th year in a row, we are gathered here at Hofburg, home of the OECE, to represent the collective voice of one billion people, one billion people across the OECE area, who have elected us and on, wh on whose behalf we have to work. Last month, Minister Dasist outlined the Serbia's chairmanship agenda with timely and uh, relevant priorities in all three dimensions of the OECE work. We welcome the assurance that Serbia is ready to act as an honest broker in building peace and stability in Ukraine taking full advantage of the tools that the OECE offers, including the work of the Special Monitoring Mission. The OECEPA will continue to support our organization's efforts in Ukraine, and in particular, we must support the fullest commitments for reform made by the RADA. The monitoring mission has played key, a key, key role in the implementation of Minsk documents and has been instrumental, instrumental in shaping an international response to the crisis that is both fact-based and timely. I can uh, not stress enough that the monitors on ground have to have access throughout Ukraine in order to carry out the mandate entrusted to them by all the, participant, the participating states. We all sincerely hope the agreement from Minsk last week will hold as the escalation of violence preceding the, uh, uh, the, the agreement including mountain, mounting civilian suffering has been appealing and have constantly raised my voice as a President of the Assembly to call on all sides, Russia in particular, to take decisive steps to help end the bloodshed. The loss of civilian lives is unacceptable and the humanitarian situation needs to be addressed. Even as the OECE has provided leadership throughout the crisis and offered a vital dialogue and negotiation, at times it proved challenging the organize, for the organization to keep up with the rapid changes in the conflict environment. Nevertheless, the agreement reached in Minsk hangs in the balance. It is shocking to hear the claims by rebels and support for those claims that there are inspections for the ceasefire and areas where it doesn't apply. Make no mistake, there are no such things as inspections here and such a precedent could have disastrous consequences for the entire Minsk process. Let's not take any detours on the road 
to much needed peace in Ukraine today. After the events in the Balchev and now the aftermath, I once again ask if an international peacekeeping operation mission should be considered, and I'm not saying this to undermine the work done by the Special Monitoring Mission, quite the opposition, opposite, in fact. An international peacekeeping mission could perhaps complement the OEC's work in making the peace process viable. While the Ukraine crisis may rightly consume the lion's share in our attention, we must remember that it is not the only challenge that we have facing, that we are facing. With recent tragedies such the t uh, terror shooting in Paris or Copenhagen offering terrible reminders of the ongoing threats security posed by violent extremists, we must commit to redoubling our efforts to improve our counter-terrorism strategies, for example, by bettering intelligent sharing, making border control more effective, and combating extremists in the Internet. 2015 is a year of milestone and anniversaries that offers opportunities for serious reflection on achievements, setbacks, and possibilities, taking stock of lessons learned and obstacles overcome as we continue to tackle the challenges of our century. When it comes to the OEC, 2015 marks 40 years anniversary of the signing of the OEC founding document, which I'm proud to say will commemorate this summer in Helsinki by holding a final colloquium of the OEC EPA Helsinki Plus 40 project in conjunction with the Assembly's 24th annual session at Historical Finlandia Hall. With our next annual session being held under the theme recording the spirit of Helsinki and taking place at the venue where the historic document was signed four decades ago, I hope that we can rekindle the spirit of cooperation that has guided our work since 1975 and provided the basis for real progress in the three dimensions of security and cooperation as outlined in Helsinki Final Act. And now, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I would ask to give the floor to the German in office, Minister Datschitz. Thank you.